Here we go. We're back. Here we are, peeps. Episode three. Uh, we hope you enjoyed episode one and two available now on SoundCloud. If you haven't listened to them yet, feel free to drop in. And if you have, we hope you enjoyed them. And uh, we're here. It's Thursday, August 4th. We're here to put out some more content uh, across the table. OG Danny in the house as always. What up, what up? And we got Benny here as well for his Going first on. time. Thanks for having me, boys. <laughs> That's no worries, it. man. Welcome, welcome. Uh, ben, Benny's been a long-term friend of ours. He's an avid podcaster, huge rugby league and mixed martial arts fan. So like-minded fellow, we thought he'd get him on in Chris's absence. Chris is down in Victoria. So here we are, Chris. We'll have a, uh, have a number and toast a drink for you and uh, we'll see you next week. But uh, leading in here, with th- it's Thursday night. We're here and we're in my St. George jersey. We got Dragons Broncos tonight down at Wynn Stadium. Dragons fan, I'm hopeful, but personally, I think the uh, the Broncos might have too much with their Origin Stars back. What do you reckon, show, Benny? They need to show something. It's been a bad few weeks for the boys. I think Wayne's pissed off. He's yeah. got a few boys. Yeah, they fucking definitely need it, man. I don't. Know, it's, they've just gone to shit over the last few weeks. So they just had so much promise at the start of the season. I was just backing them every single time. Yeah. Like I'm a Broncos supporter, but. Uh, yeah, the last few weeks, it's just like, how can you back them? That's it. If they don't go down there tonight and put a performance on... So uh, it's in St. George. It is, yeah. If they don't go down there and put a performance on, I think you could almost write the Broncos off at this point. There's that many yeah. teams around them going really, really good. Of talking, Titans, Manly, they're sniffing. That's it. Looking for those spots in the uh, southern end of the eight where if Canberra win this weekend, they can wrap up the top four. But I think what's overshadowed everything this week, there's all eyes on one game this weekend, and we're talking Titans-Warriors out of the Gold Coast. Jared Haynes back. Haynes yeah. playing, flying over the Q1. Never, never thought I'd have an, any interest in a Titans game, but uh, I'll probably tune into this one. For <laughs> sure. Uh, ticket sales are reportedly already. They're basically going to get a sellout. Everyone wants to come out and see the Haynes playing. Well, Which you see the start at Seabus, they had like 4,000 people at the start of the games. And now, last week, they had about 14,000. And now yeah, that's sold crazy, out. man. Pain, pain, getting in They've like tripled their uh, ticket sales and all that stuff. Oh fuck yeah! Big Kiwi community on the on the Gold Coast as well. Like any time the Warriors come out here for Suncorp, it's like um, there's always forty thousand there and probably twenty five thousand of a Kiwi. It's so stars. crazy. He's just like an enormous fucking star here, and like the fact that he couldn't even cut the mustard overseas in in the NFL shows you just how deep the fucking NFL is. It I mean, is. it's it's a totally different game as well, like shout out, but uh, yeah, he, ca- he's a freak um, athlete at at rugby league, but yeah, trying to translate the skills it. obviously, but For, it's but just crazy like last night that was like the first 7 minutes of the 6 o'clock news was Jared Hayne, you know, like yeah, and yeah. there's all kinds of shit going on in the world, but that's like that's the biggest news story out here. It's like he is fucking massive. There's two sleeps to the Olympics, and it's like what fucking Olympics? The Hayne plane's <laughs> back, baby. He's back in the house. Yeah. I've always been a Jared Hayne fan. I'll be the first to put my hand up and say that a world of attachment. I'm a Blues fan at Origin time, so obviously I fucking put him up on a pedestal. Two time Dally M. Like who could forget that run that, that he had in '09? I think it was when he had. When he won his first Dally M, yeah, he was fucking untouchable. He, was, the year, he was untouchable, man, at, at that point. And it's just good as a league fan to have him back. It doesn't matter where he ended up. There's a lot of fucking disgruntled para fans out there that are sinking the boot into him, saying, "Look, we let him go, and he's dogged us that he hasn't come back." But he you just haven't got your shit together out there mm. at Para. Your club's fucking falling apart because you're bored. You probably already owe this money, paying money from a previous contract, allegedly. What makes him think he's just going to walk back? He came to Gold Coast training today and said, I contacted Para about an offer, saying, hey, have you yeah. got something for me? Are you fucking serious? The Titans offer was on the table back in March. That's and it. he said he had multiple offers and he apparently went to lunch with Tim Manor and he said, you know, like, when's an offer coming? And then he said, I'm going to the Titans. I want to play football this year. And then yeah, as soon as true. he um, said that, the Titans were like, yeah, we've given him an offer in the last 24 hours. It's like, do um, you think... Um, I've got eels, sorry. <laughs> do you think that... Because uh, he, he'd gone and played... Straight out of 49ers, like I, I think it, it was massive what he achieved over there, even mm. to get game time to get into a starting oh, starting yeah. thing. Fuck like, yeah. but he, it is cutthroat over there, and he just wouldn't have had the time now to develop. Like, new coach coming in under a new system. So, obviously, Jim Tom Sula there last year, he liked him, so favoured him that side. He is, yeah, he is. But anyway, moved moved to rugby sevens out of that to pursue that dream, and ended up playing time for Fiji. Mm. Five as, games as a result of that at those sevens tournaments, he cannot play for the Wallabies. Oh, so really? that basically put a line through rugby for him. Wow. Basically, I, I reckon. In league. I reckon anyway, like play union. Oh, yeah. Because he'd played yeah. for Fiji in those seven, so he couldn't play for the Wallabies. That's massive. And uh, so he's, wor- they ended up, couldn't get anything tabled there. And hey, he's, he's come to the Gold Coast and just intrigued to see how he goes. Now, he'll probably come off the bench this week. He's going to be rusty, but 
using that sevens training to get in the Olympics with Fiji, he'd, he'd be in shape now. But I'm sort of glad Fiji, in the end, didn't take him to that Olympics. I'd hate to see him cut in line someone. Did you see any old footage of him playing for Fiji? Yeah. Zero tries, five games. Like, yeah. No wonder he didn't make the cut. True. That's it. Look, it's, um, and I'd hate to see him push in line for someone who's been in their system for three years, like a kid over there who's been... Mm doing the full sevens tour and stuff for him to cut in. So I respect the coach for not picking him Definitely. and just not going along with the sideshow of it sort of thing. But good to see him back in league and fuck him. all the best to him. We'll, we'll, we'll know soon enough what sort of nick he's in. He'll probably come off the bench against the Titans and yeah. we'll fucking we'll go from there. And you know me, I'm sorry, I'm a big Queensland fan. And, you know, when Hayden left off, I was happy. I was like, oh, expat, support the guy going overseas, chasing that dream. But then, you know, he has different dreams and everyone's giving him shit about it. But I'm like, man, this is just a young guy just going out there, just trying stuff oh, and, so, yeah, and not scared of failing. Like, and, 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 you know, if you're talking about creating your own sort of life story, if you were to try and write a book about your life and shit, like taking risks like that, uh, you know, better, you get better life experiences out of doing that than you will like playing it safe and sticking to what you know. So, man, fucking full credit to him, eh? That, that just like makes, you know, five more chapters in the, in the story of Jared Hayne. It's fucking, it's awesome. And he's 28. Mm, that's it, man. You, I, I never, never shy away from athletes doing something to better their futures. And they've got fi- a 15 year window of earning potential. Yeah. Mm. Like, if you finish up as an athlete at 35, you've been so fucking lucky. And you've still got 30 years of a working career left to retire if you haven't really been in that mm. Floyd Mayweather fucking yeah. type of range. Like, even those NFL guys are going fucking broke every year. Like, one third of the NFL ends up broke after five years. Yeah. Like these guys don't just have... popping bottles too their much. B- Bottles, big family. Everyone wants that. Like, oh, I'm not... You buy him a car. He's just, he needs to go to college. Like, like, that's yeah. it. Yeah, you hurt. Um, speaking of paychecks, fucking Tyron Woodley gets $50,000 for uh, performance of the night. Man, what a... Uh, what a Should fucking mention of that shit. Absolutely, man. We were uh, we definitely previewed that on the last one in our SoundCloud. You might have heard that, and uh, there was chat of the potential of Robbie Lawler's chin wearing away after some of these wars. And I think it is too soon to even say that now because we didn't see a lot of that contest. But but that was a fucking huge uh, hit, bro. Uh, that not that would probably fucking light up any one seventy on the roster. I don't care who you are. That was so Power well timed for days. Man, Wood- Woodley looked in fucking ridiculous shape. Bang on one seventy. Must have had a fucking when he was pressing. Um, when he was pressing uh, Lawler up against the cage, his fucking like posterior chain, dude. His fucking legs and ass and shit. It looks like he's Fuck. wearing a nappy, man. He's just all power. That dude's just a genetic fucking freak. That's it. And Tyron kind of clued into some of his tactics on a podcast he was on uh, earlier this week where he said too many people were punching Robbie flat, like he's got a flat face, and he said his technique was to kind of come at him and hit him at an angle. Right. And he said that's, if you can hit him at an angle with one of those punches, he said, I just knew it. And he said every Bye. round he was training, he would say he'll get one water bottle, and he said he was that, that confident. He said, just give me one water bottle because that's all I'm going to need tonight. And... He went True. out and did it. And that's how people wow. predicted if he was going to win, he was just kind of coming yeah, out and Yeah, for sure. I, I, yeah. I, there's no way I would have had Tyron winning over five rounds yeah. if I was to say, like, if I was to like, preempt what would happen. Tyron did what he needed to do and he fucking put it away early and just left it to no danger. I don't think he got punched. Yeah. Mm. So good seeing, like, an uh, Instagram photo of, I think it's his mum or his grandma, like, wearing his belt, just fucking sitting down. She's, yeah. like, old lady and shit. From and Ferguson, man. They would have seen some shit oh, recently. That would mean a lot shit. to them and to that town itself oh, yeah. Ferguson yeah, seen some shit mm. and what's like going on in Ferguson oh, that shooting the, of the kid I, oh, what's his yeah name? I'd, I'd, have to, I'd have to fact check more the kid, like but, uh, uh, police uh, shooting black kids yeah, and stuff yeah, yeah, yeah right. qu- quite common and uh, right. one, one of these kids had done absolutely nothing apparently, uh, allegedly and mm. yeah there, there was a hell of a lot of, it was an absolute hotbed there for a while best part of six months ago I reckon oh, yeah. but Riot it still, still would be what am I saying it still would be yeah but, true mm. He and would, taking the strap back. Yeah, and with coming from Ferguson, you hear Woodley, like he mentioned on the UFC Unfiltered podcast with Matt Serra and Jim Norton, he kind of clued in that how people talk about him, like slowing down in the later rounds. He didn't like, he said it was quite racist. And he says Joe Rogan kind of has, doesn't, has an unconscious bias towards pe- people against African-American culture. Like really? Said, Somebody's oh, accusing really? Rogan yeah. of being he uh, said it's not Rogan's unconscious fault. He just racist. doesn't realise how he explains Woodley's... Uh, and he said he even uses me as an example that, like, black men of my size can't be quick and, you know, like, I'll gas out and stuff like that. But I'm just, like, thinking bro science. Like, isn't that just your muscles to bleeding or something? Yeah, I don't know, yeah. but... 
it was funny how he just went on about it. And maybe that's because he comes from a place like Ferguson and that yeah. is kind of at the forefront of his life. Yeah, it's true, just could, thinking you're persecuted. Could, if you go back and study fights of uh, white people versus black people and listen to Rogan's commentary <laughs> and just see if it like... <laughs> Critique just, it for yeah, bias. That's if he... <laughs> Cowboy Melvin, he's born for cowboy. You would have to be, <laughs> yeah. You would have to be a pretty sad dude to sit at home and go through yeah. all the fucking commentary footage that you could find of Rogan just to critique it. Someone like. uh, <laughs> Roy Nelson versus Czech Congo. Who do you reckon Rogan's going for? <laughs> Roy. Yeah. He'll get him in that, uh, punch him in the head. You know how he just lies on everyone? How he got Kimbo in the house? Oh, I mean, yeah, just took him down in the tough Superman house. Superman crucifix yeah. or whatever yeah. they call it. Yeah, so, yeah uh. I think he had him in a, like, in a big like, mountain crucifix mm. and he just, I think at one point he honked Kimbo's nose. Yeah. I like rewatched that Just degrading like, him. Man, that's a good season of tough. Like, tough, the, the tough model for me now is dead. I, mm. I can't get into it. The talent isn't out there like it was in yesteryear. If there is unearthed talent out there now, they're fucking signed somewhere. Like if we're talking really high end guys, like look at th- this weekend's main event, UFC Salt Lake City. We're talking Caceres versus Yair. Yeah, Yair's Yair is this year. This Yair year, I think could be on his way to superstardom. Yeah, well, it, yeah. they say that he, they're trying to build him up going through Caceres, but Caceres is like, no, they ain't yeah. building him C- up. Going Caceres, through me. Caceres just beat the shit out of Cole Miller. Yeah, his fuck his impro- performance, impressive last time. That was on the prelims of. Uh, like a one nine nine or one of the one of the cards in between there. I think it might have been one nine nine actually. It was on the prelims and Bruce Leroy just yeah. looked electric, man. He was just in the groove that night. Cole had nothing for him, but backing up pretty quick turnaround. So he must be healthy and in shape. But yeah, year is an, mm. another monster to Cole Miller. Don't sleep on yeah. it. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I've never late. seen a fight of your years. Uh, you, I think we watched him. Do you remember when he head kicked Andre Feely recently on a prelims? I think you would you would have been there for that. Mm, oh, yeah. No, it's not ringing any bells. Yeah, this, 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 this side and kicks. Yeah, year, yeah, year is eight and one man. Uh, one one forty five, but he's he's five foot eleven. So he's Fuck. a he's a big forty five. man. Mm. Mm. coming in, cutting a lot of weight. He's beat. Uh, he's on a seven fight, uh, six fight win streak in the UFC at the moment. So, Bruce Leroy. What is he, 8-1? Yeah, I think Bruce Leroy. He's had eight losses too. Has uh, he? Bruce yeah, Leroy, 16 wow. 16 and 8 or something. Wow, yeah, he's been around a long time. He's a veteran too. See, he fought when he was young. So a lot of those losses on his record, he's probably 19, 20, shit like that. But That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, he was fucking going he, great. Going. He's like a vegan too, isn't he? He's like full martial yeah. artist. Very, very like spiritual, very spiritual-minded person, man. Uh, I was only saying to Danny the other day, he's a fucking interesting cat, that guy. He really is, but... um. You looking forward to the Olympics or what? Yeah, man, but it, I've been counting down for Rio for a while. Um, I've been seeing like some of the gymnastic strength training online and seeing some of the people get it ready for that. But uh, Ido Portal. Yeah, well, there's a girl from touch button the park. Yeah, Tenerife I saw at New Farm Park and her name's Danielle Prince and she's going for gold medal for Australia and she's, she's won the world's gold. So she's Shout out, right. Danielle. Bring home that gold. That's it. Get that get him, girl. You pumped up for it, Danny? How are you feeling about it, man? I mean, to be honest, I think the communication strategy in their fucking advertising department is like slim to nil. It's fucking... I haven't seen shit. I, I like... I, it was only through word of mouth the other day that I found out that it was on in like fucking next week or whatever. I still don't even know when it starts. I when know, Saturday. 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 It starts on Saturday. It starts on Saturday. I did not know it was That's two it, days away. I'm fucking... I haven't heard shit. I, yeah. I, I, granted, I don't go home. I don't turn on seven news. I don't turn on nine news. I'm just Mate, I, I watch. Person. I watch maybe the first half an hour of the news, like yep. just uh, just to have it on in the background and um, no, nothing really. Like yeah, a few... The mo- Most of the shit that I've heard is just about... You know the shit that's gone wrong with the infrastructure that they've yeah. put in, and how corrupt Brazil is, and Body just the showing up in the felt hours. Yeah, the, oh, yeah, the, the, the village is fucked. The Wi-Fi is slow. Like that's all the shit I'm hearing. I'm not hearing shit about events. I don't know when any events are on. Who's who's going to be like the main gold well, threats for Australia? Apparently, Channel Seven are um, broadcasting on free to air about a thousand hours mm-hmm. of the. Um, of the Olympics, and Fuck then yeah. they're doing a subscription service for about more than double that amount. Right. Which is like... I got Foxtel. So they'll fucking... They'll cover that shit hard too. So between Seven and Foxtel, you'll be able to get a good good mix of shit. For free. But I don't know... Will what, it be what? on Foxtel though? I think I think in this case, Channel 7 have bought the exclusive rights. So right? I think that's they why they've done it? this portion of um, paid TV. And I read this thing today that was all about how it's bullshit because basically like Foxtel, there's, there's a law. It's some sort of... Like, it's got a catchy name, but obviously not that catchy because I can't remember it. 
um, where <coughs> where paid subscription TV can't have the rights to any events because it, it it's like uh, Channel Nine with State of Origin. You can only watch that on Foxtel the second it finishes. Yeah, like right. They, they have right. they play Origin on Foxtel at nine thirty and shit. Like when it. Uh, mm. That's but um, so but, it but it's kind of it's kind of bullshit then because the the law is to prevent paid TV from having the the rights to but then a free to air channel is doing it but fucking charging people subscription for the for the rights to watch but I think with um I think you know any sort of Olympics where there's a huge time delay like this one will be viewership is always going to be down in those Tricky, countries man. Yeah. you need and you need to be dedicated to do it but I don't know if they air it sort of goes into prime time in other countries rather than being in Brazil. I've heard things where they're swimming a lot of the races there in in terms of finals at like midnight, 1am. Like So that would be difficult as an athlete to try and adjust your schedule to that, especially being in the village when there's like some people would be finished their events so there's people there probably having kick-ons and like... Mm. I People want, I want the gold, so I'm partying, like everyone banging. Like there would be so. Have you heard some of the like condom statistics that come out of the Olympics? <laughs> condom statistics. Yeah, like some no. of the, they, they, apparently they issue like fucking like over five hundred thousand uh, dommies in the village, like uh, provided Amongst around the athletes. in in free jars just around the village. And so right. if you come through the front desk at the reception, dommies. It's like, just yeah. a huge fuck fest. It would be, man. It, it would be. Really. These, these athletes would be so dedicated. It would be, man. Wherever you go, man. Not any Olympics. Like the, all these athletes, so dedicated, have just been towed the hard line probably for four years to get yep. there. It's like fuck this. And Let's you got to think, as an athlete, there's a lot of shit that you're not allowed to do that you're not allowed to enjoy. Fucking ain't one of them. That's you it, can man. still fuck it. Yeah. It doesn't affect shit, your athletic shit. performance. You're staying at the like, same place. Some of these, uh, some of these athletes, <laughs> it would be, it would be wild over there. You talk about the U.S. men's basketball team, like, <laughs> oh, yeah. oh shit, for serious. Say no more. Yeah, say no no more. No, say Usain, no. like you see him, po- po- do you see Bolt after he won in London? He was back at the village with like the Swedish handball team, like European handball, like the women's team back there. He's in, like, having a kick on at their unit. What's he doing there? He's there with all these gold medals, and. Uh, I'm pulling for Bolt hard to get yeah. uh, three in a row. You see the photos of him smoking weed lately? Really? So the fastest man really? in the wo- man, man in the world on land and yeah. water. Look where he's from. Chris brought it look up the other day, yeah. actually. Oh, yeah, look, well, look where he's <laughs> look where he's from. Uh, look where he's from. He's from the Caribbean. Us- yeah, Usain. Jamaica. Yeah, yeah. yeah. C- comes with the ter- oh, yeah. comes with the territory over there. What about mm. the controversy with the water um, for the rollers? Like they all got to wear these safety suits because. It's too much toxins in the water. Yeah, I've heard that. Even, no, and that, that's and for like shower. The, uh, not. I don't think that. Don't know if that's for the rowing or if it's for the, like the little catamaran fucking sailing events that they have oh. over there too, where it's out in the uh, open ocean. It must be near a catchment. Yeah. And uh, yeah. the water is just. And they just <laughs> tried everything, <laughs> and they yeah. couldn't do anything. So they yeah. got a shower oh. after the event and oh everything. God. Shocking man. And, and it's not. A, it's not a way to make money. It, like Olympics is known to be. Fucking good way to financial ruin, like oh, man. a couple well, of these countries. That's like, look at Athens; <coughs> they pumped so much money into Greece in that Olympics, and look mm. where they are now. And, and they just and had the FIFA happens, World man. Cup two years ago in Rio de Janeiro as that's well. It. They, they pumped; they had got. I a don't lot. know. I wonder what sort of haircut we took on it because I, I was back to like the athletic side of things in terms of not knowing what's going on. If you remember growing up as a kid, everyone knew who the Australian Olympic team was. Like all the swimming in that generation, like. Hackett, Thorpe, Clem, fucking yeah. all these dudes. Was you, it because we were good? Yeah, I think I think it might have been. Like, well, you sort of fucking hauled the pool like in the, around that time. We had sort of gun teams. Yeah, on that's the back fair. of like that's K- fair Kieran too. Perkins. Started. There's also the dynamic of being that age and being an, at that age where you're glorifying these athletes. Mm. Nowadays, they're younger than you, so yeah. you're not really like looking up to them or yeah, idolizing. Because you reckon more of a nation, but I'm talking even our parents would know who all those people well, are. Well, those guys like are still famous now, you yeah, know what I mean? That's like Ian right. Thorpe's still, still a TV celebrity. Right. Like, like who's around name, now? Name five people on the Australian yeah, swim I, team. I, I couldn't do it. Lisa yeah. Jones? No, she's yeah, retired. No, yeah. <laughs> a Redcliffe girl, shout out, Brizzy girl. Yeah, there's that one dude who's like a, um, he's studying like astrophysics or something as well. And I saw him in town the other day actually, but yeah. I couldn't even tell you his name. Yeah. If you told me his name, I'd, re- I'd remember. McAvoy? Yeah, it yeah might be that he's he's an he's an Aussie swimmer. He's um one of the red hot favourites, I think. Actually, I think he might get the gold. One of the one yeah. of the girl swimmers as well as it meant to get one. But but you're right in comparison. Yeah, yeah. definitely. But yeah, is that is that because people are just too busy now and shit too? Like, are they more occupied? Like to Sydney two thousand, there's not crazy sort of internet around and True shit. That. You had Good like point. 
just sit around and watch the Olympics, but now everyone's fucking sitting on the couch on their Insta it's rather than being a real on valid point, man. Yeah, yeah I, I maybe yeah. The, it's that there's not the consumer interest there as much as it would have been pre-internet. Yeah, yeah. The, when there's so much other shit going on, it's like you're right. Oh, I could I could sit here and watch the uh, the men's rowing, but. We're balls deep in this Netflix series and fuck yeah. It's yeah. Like, it's like what Demetrius Johnson, Mighty Mouse Johnson said when he was fighting Henry Cejudo. He goes, there's what, 4,500 gold medals out there, but there's only one 125 pounder gold belt and yeah. I got that. Mad, mad. Yeah, <laughs> see, that, that's the go. But <laughs> Fucking. I, I hope we do well, don't get me wrong. I'll, I'll, and, I'll, and I will watch a lot of it because it will be on and it ha- only happens every four years, but I, I wish there was more Top hype. Five. I, don't, I don't even know where it goes after Rio, but... Yeah, the last um, Olympics that I reckon I watched a lot of actually wasn't that long ago. It would have been um, 2014 was the... Uh, Sochi. Sochi, Winter oh, Olympics. Winter, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, man, we watched heaps of that. We watched yeah, man, I remember um, I broke up with my girlfriend in um, in Canada and then um, was just like a sad sack and flew down to LA to like hang out with like a friend of the family and stuff like that. And I ended up just crashing on his couch for like two weeks and riding my bike up and down like the Manhattan, like, uh, like, uh, the Manhattan foot- beach. Yeah. What do they call it? The Esplanade? What, what do you call the footpath that runs the along the beach? The boardwalk. Yeah. yeah. You're going down by the, <laughs> the what? <laughs> the is, that in, is, that in, <laughs> is it in South Boston or California? <laughs> it's in the boardwalk, guys. Down the boardwalk. <laughs> I'll fuck you real hard. <laughs> <laughs> That's some Ray Donovan. You fucking asshole. I'll fuck you hard. But, good um, times, though, you just but yeah, see. laying on the couch, man, watching fuckloads of like uh, the big fucking like the snowboard cross as well as those. What do they call the the big jump that they do? Oh, it's a couple of obstacles, isn't it? Where they like cruise down and they do like a tabletop and then they'll do a yeah, a mound, slope style, a rail slope style. Yeah, yeah. that's a re- relatively new event in the it's, win- Winter it's, Olympics, uh, isn't it? It's just park skiing. X game style for gold. X game it's style. Sh- this shit. Gangsta. Yeah. yeah. That's so, that, so sick. That uh, shit. After um <laughs> we took a we took a gap year and went to live in Canada for a period of time. All three of us. It's yeah. on separate occasions. All three of us. We all ended up there as friends yeah. and fucking here we are still here now. But it was uh after going there and actually seeing the size of those jumps and shit, it fucking blew my mind. How big and how much balls these fucking little like sixteen, seventeen like year kids, olds man. going down there. Doing like double backflips over these things, where if it goes wrong, bye bye spinal cord. Oh yeah, it's fucked up. And I've seen it go wrong a few times, like mates with compound injuries, like forearms popping out. You know, of course he was drunk and stoned allegedly, but <laughs> like, yeah, and then other mates out. having to get Halley flown away because they're trying to do a backflip after only snowboarding for a month. Shout out was <laughs> was <Waza. laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> shattering your pelvic bone. And Dude, I remember fever. fucking seeing this video of this guy that uh, that Maddie knew when we were over there, and uh, it was r- right around the time of the. Um, was it the ice bucket challenge or was it a different sort of viral challenge? I think it was like a sculling challenge maybe. Yeah, that would nominate. Yeah, Nick it was, nominate. man. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well done, man. Well it done. was. Thank Come you. Yeah, Thank you, man. you, Benji. Um, but uh, and he fucking is standing at the top of this run in the park on his skis and he's got this huge sort of like 50 centimetre billy and he pours a fucking full like tinny into it and then... Aces the aces it, aces it rips rips the rips the billy like with the like the beer in the, it as, the as bill water. The, yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Then like takes the billy and chugs all of the beer that he's just pulled a cone through like out of the fucking thing. puts the puts the billy down, takes off on his skis, hits this fucking jump, and does like a full on backy and lands it. Yeah, straight up, man. Fucking <laughs> what an just shout craziness out. over there, eh? Shout out. That was some unreal shit. And I loved uh, sort of forming friendships with a couple of those guys over there and even going out to watch them ski, just sitting at the side of the park sometimes and watching them. You just take my hat off to them. But yeah. how, how good are gap years for that sort of shit though, really? Eh? It is just Yeah, well, obviously Australia's got that sort of reciprocal relationship with Canada where there's like a visa exchange and stuff like that. We have similar sort of setups in terms of that. So it's like, you know, with Australia, there's just 
fuck oh, tons yeah. of Australians over like on the on the west of the coast of Canada. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're not here to take part. <laughs> We're here to take over. <laughs> but yeah, fuck man. The biggest thing, the biggest struggle that I faced in Canada was trying to find a well paid job. Like it made me have a whole new appreciation for the Australian economy and how much, you know, basic fucking labor and minimum wage jobs pay you over here. Yeah, un- unskilled work out here, you're getting looked after still. That's yeah. Just yeah, like yeah. people were astounded, Canadians were astounded that you can get paid $20 an hour for an unskilled job. Yeah, just un- unreal. But, but but you spent you spent more time than us there, Benny. We, I've had just shy of 18, how, how 18 months over in, there. You lived there for like five years. Five yeah, well, I've been something. over there on two separate occasions the first time i left was at like the start of 2010 and i was single back then and the second time was a different experience when i was traveling with my girlfriend so that was uh, a lot longer but the first time was awesome because just did not plan anything just showed up at the airport i only planned to go a month before i left showed up at the airport and how old were you then 20 20 nah. that's fucking crazy man you just like 20 just cutting loose like you've un- you're realistically you're only a couple of years out of school and it's Fuck just yeah. like you turn loose on the world. Yeah. And, yeah. and probably at 20 may think you know more than you actually yeah, know. Yeah, I was still living at home. Oh, no, I was out of home by then, but I thought I do, did know yeah. a lot. But you yeah. don't. You learn so much when you travel, Ab- definitely. Absolutely, man. Do you boys want some beers? I'd love one, man. Sure. I'd love one. We can carry this bitch. <laughs> 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 Mate, one of... Uh, just on like fucking skilled work and shit, one of my favourite stories of yours, fucking throwing it back to when, when you first went over there, um, f- just f- to let the to let the listeners know, Benny has never done any sort f- sort of farrier work fucking in history ar- around horses. Never fucking ridden a horse, let alone no. changed its shoes. But My only it. experience were probably broke back mountain. You know, watching that. No. That's it. So you just ro- just rock up to the rock up to the farm, uh, 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 like applying for a job. Is that why you're there? No, no, no. So what actually happened was this was the first time I went over, so I had no plans. Just rocked up um, to the airport in Vancouver. Uh, went and booked in a uh, backpackers and asked for a week. Uh, that first night we got kicked out. Just it's on up. Granville. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, the same sun. Ma- uh, yeah, Shout nice. Out yeah, polar for h- kicking us out the first night. But that's all right. Um, but one thing the same sun did give us. We saw the notice board that day, and on there was an ad about uh, farm work and doing something up there. And we're like, oh yeah, I was with one of my mates. I was travelling with at the time called Aaron, and we're like, oh, let's just see what's going on. We stayed in Vancouver for another week, and then we called him up and we're like yeah we've got some experience he's jackaroos back in australia so <laughs> you know we've we've worked with horses uh you've seen that movie australia pretty much we're like that on the outback uh. <laughs> <laughs> not thinking that uh, that would come back to bite us in the ass at that stage but yeah we we took a trip up to northern bc a place uh, past carpenter lake called Goldbridge. Mad. Now, uh, Goldbridge has a population of 35 people <laughs> and um, we were two hours part beyond that place, so even further away from uh, any hum- humans. Uh, Fucking hell, man. It, that must have been mind-blowing in itself at that age, just going out. And I haven't been to, to like BC myself, it would have been bastard shit out yeah. there, right? frozen lakes. Because when we went, it was winter. Oh. Frozen lakes, just hills for days, mountains for days. Yeah. And it's just, you know, pine trees, Angus fir trees. It's just beautiful. Unreal. And uh, so we, we go on, on the drive and we're like, where the fuck are we going? This is so far away. We get there and uh, eventually, and the first, the guy's a real redneck, like a true Canadian redneck and... At the time, he's like, oh, yeah, so there's 55 horses here on the ranch. And we're like, oh, okay, cool. Um, nice. Didn't think anything about it. And we, he kind of let us ease in because we got there in the evening. Um, Wake up tomorrow for work, yeah, back. Yeah, get ready. Yeah, so yeah. in the morning, we get there and uh, they show us the horses. And uh, he's like, oh, yeah, so you've, you've obviously done a lot of this work back in Australia. Like, yeah, yeah. And he um, gets the horses around and goes, yeah, it's just about time we kind of clip all their nails and change all their shoes. And I'm <laughs> like, oh, yeah, maybe. Uh, oh, I might have bitten off a bit too much. You know? <laughs> but, but still, we're in the middle of nowhere. I'm like, oh, no, this is, we get to live in here. They let's feed us. Let's clip these fucking things. Yeah, let's get it done. <laughs> But then, uh, that's what I was thinking, let's just do it. And then I saw the horses and I'm like, holy fuck, this thing's going to kick me. And, uh, but lucky enough, I kind of met this Austrian guy that was leaving the week later and he had done some farrier work. I didn't even know what farrier meant at the time. For real? So he showed you how to fucking change a horse's shoe? In broken English too. The thing is, he couldn't that's speak awesome. English. And then I was just like, nah, like, I was like, 
I can't do this, man. I don't, I don't know what to do. And yeah. He, and then he just showed me. He just we patted the first horse. We put it between our legs, like with us facing the horse's ass. And I'm like freaking out, thinking its other legs gonna kick me. But no, nah, got it between the legs. And then he just showed me how to clean out all the, the shit in its foot, and then clip it the nail, then take off the shoe with like that's a mad. back end of True. a hammer, and then nail in the new one. And then just that's one. Go on to the next foot. But there was some sketchy times when you think, oh, they're gonna kick me, but. By the end of it, those horses, I jump on them bareback and, yeah, just yeah. ride. <laughs> <laughs> no shirt, just some jeans, hair yeah, blowing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we took them tree logging and everything. It was amazing. Uh, I got a good relationship with horses after that. Dude, just like, fuck. Okay. They were jackaroos after all, eh? <laughs> <laughs> we actually got uh, kicked off the farm after a couple of months because uh, the chainsaw kept broken and he kept on blaming, the redneck owner kept blaming us for... Uh, you know, breaking his shit. And, and then the guy I was with, Aaron's like, nah, it's fucking you and your cheap shit. And just going off at him, goes, you're fucking out of here. <laughs> like, man, we're like eight hours from civilization. How are we out? So we had to awkwardly stay there for a couple more days. True. Not oh, working. Like a, when you just broken up and shit? Yeah. Like he's lingering around his yeah. gas. So we just take his snowmobiles out the next oh. couple of days, explore and shit. True. Sleep Fuck. with a butt plug in and shit. <laughs> 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 the shittiest job that I worked in Canada was... Um, Came via answering ads on um, on Craigslist. Yeah. It's not not as bad as sounds. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who was he? For, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Who was he, mate? LBGT. <laughs> <laughs> for these um, for these labour hire gigs, like and uh, for um, for furniture removals, and uh, answered this one that was basically just like you know you. S- standard uh, standard furniture removals ad, but. Um, when I got there, the dudes are like all Eastern European. There was a Polish guy, a guy from Czech Republic, and the boss was Russian. And um, good mix there. All wearing all black, and they've got this huge, big white truck with no decal on it or anything like that. And um, I rock up, and I'm just like, you know, what the fuck's going on here? Like, basically, the guy from Czech Republic was the only one that had decent enough English, and. Um, and we ended up like going out to this job and on the way there, he's like, the Russian guy's like, explain to him what we do and stuff like that. And so basically it was um, somebody that was employed by like a debt collection agency for people that get evicted from their homes for not paying rent. So like once the uh, bail bondsman goes into the fucking property with a bulletproof vest on and like a big high vis thing that says, you know whatever <coughs> whatever his title is there's a bunch of heavies anyway you couldn't really like mm-hmm. tell what sort of like role they played but they were like the heavies would go in there would be a notice to evict on the, on the door and, and nine times out of ten it would be completely empty and shit like that big big dudes the heavies yeah yeah yeah, yeah. but well, not like you know they don't look like superstar athletes or anything but they look like formidable characters yeah. you know don't fuck I mean? with yeah, me like kind of shit. Look. there's two of them ah oh, fuck wearing a big long like leather jacket and then putting on you like high vis to go into the really? properties and stuff like that but like uh there was some there was one in particular was fucking hectic was like these people that had obviously lived on this property for a long time man like they had you know spare tires up the yin yang and a tractor out the back and there was chickens cruising around it was like they had you know a lifetime worth of shit at this place and um apparently like just before we got there or as we rocked up the guy the owner or whatever just fucking belted off in his in his pickup and left his girlfriend there drove drove off drove off oh. <laughs> <laughs> like, what he belted off <laughs> <laughs> and um and left his girlfriend there and she was like quite clearly under the influence of meth or fucking something real heavy because eh? she was just like one minute she was so crazy high and then the next minute she was in tears and the next minute she's hysterically laughing oh, yeah. while, while we're nah nah just yeah. rough white trash on the outskirts of um oh fuck I, i'd be struggling Surrey. now Surrey, yeah, no, yeah. white rock is a good place isn't yeah, it yeah but it's yeah, in Surrey. yeah it's in it's a nice spot in sorry i think really? white rock nah i think we're butchering this but anyway but um white rock kids, and, kids yeah fuck and um <laughs> 
that it was just fucking brutal, man. You're carrying like literally I was like opening up boxes and, and putting in all the photo frames of them at their wedding and shit like that. Just oh. dumping them into boxes, sealing the boxes up, taking them out onto the truck, just taking all that what stuff. What have I got like, my fucking self into here? <laughs> exactly, like, yeah. man. I'm not just for, the, for uh, like 10 bucks an hour or the, something. I'm the know? repo man. Yeah. Like, I'm repoing. Yeah, that's yeah, what we're doing. Repo that's depot. That's what we're doing right Fuck now. Me. Taking it down to the shed for them to auction off on those uh, shed finding shows. Out in the sleet and fucking snow and rain and shit just oh drizzly old brutal, van man. just like how good is australia <laughs> yeah oh. it's, it's, so, it's solid out here yeah we like get some shit jobs or like i definitely trawled through my shit jobs over in canada but you, I did like get anywhere some right you take time right? to find your feet yeah. yeah like you just gotta land and like in whistler the bartending like I got a decent wage there. Definitely. Like, yeah, work a couple of shifts and you could get a thousand dollars in cash. Yeah. Yeah. If you B- get a job with tips, you're B- B- Busy times over there, man. You had yourself well and truly established uh, over there. Yeah, because one year I got to go on four overseas trips yeah. and just from working at the Longhorn. That's it. So you'd done... You, the fortunate part about your trip was you'd been there for so long Put that... that time. You could work yeah. where you, were, you didn't mind being at the... You didn't mind being on the other side of the bar. Yeah. Because you'd had so many times. It's an absolute party town, Whistler, Canada, where every night of the week you can be doing something or any day of the week there is something on. Yeah, allegedly and more yeah. coke in the streets than on the mountain, um, on the mountains, you know. <laughs> so, so it was allegedly, I don't know. Like I, I didn't encounter much of that myself there personally, but uh, <laughs> p- plenty, of, plenty of power up on those slopes. <laughs> oh, the gondolas and stuff too, you know. Man, just such fun times, but... Yeah, some but with the jobs, you know, like I definitely had some shit ones. Like I remember doing door knocking in Vancouver, in Surrey oh, for really? Red Cross Fuck, and lucky you didn't get just stabbed. charities and stuff. And man, it was hard. And what I had to do was get people to sign up for a monthly subscription for either ten dollars, twenty five dollars, or fifty dollars a month, like True. ongoing payments. And and if I did, they give me cash, like the the company I was working for. So I'd just get people to sign up, pretend for a month and cancel it straight away. So I'd just get paid. But mm. man, you meet some people that like, invite you in your house. You're like, yeah, come have a drink and a sandwich. And they make you like cookies and stuff. Like, What's <laughs> going on here? But man, you meet some bad people. Too. Selling Tupperwares door to door. Yeah, it's rough as. No, nah, but yeah. I think uh, maybe we'll wrap it up tonight. Do a uh, do a little half hour impromptu. Thursday nighter. We got uh, we got the batchy up next. We got uh, the the league about to start, so yeah, be a bit of channel surfing going on. But um, shout out to everybody who's been um, listening to these, and uh, we'll endeavour to bring you some more stuff. That's Sh- it. Whether you whether you're over it, whether your name's Vinny and you're over there in SoCal, or you're at home in your kitchen and your name's Berg, <laughs> from top to bottom, we love you. We hope you're enjoying the content. We'll fucking holler at you when Chris is back next week. Thanks for joining us, Benny. Thanks for the invite, boys. Anytime. I loved it. Banging. Peace out.